Okay, last but not least, we've got um, Brian Gillespie, and we've had let's, we've then had list, maybe this is lost. Um, <laughs> what's missing, digital literacy, or uh, digital literacy in the university, or literacy in the digital university? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Over to you, Brian. Uh, thank you. Um, okay, so I'm the last speaker in what so far has been a very enjoyable, entertaining afternoon. I've learned a lot. And I'm also the only thing between you and the bar, although I'm, <laughs> I'm starting to think you're the only thing between me and the bar. <laughs> Earlier in the year, I was involved in organising a national forum seminar with Mary, who is Mary Delaney from Carlo, which was called Learning to Learn at College. The keynote speaker that day was Robin Goodfellow, who's of the Open University, and his latest book is called Literacy in the Digital University. So that's where this idea came from. What are we actually talking about? Are we talking about you know, what is the important thing here? Is it the literacy that's in the university or is it the digital literacy? So what I want to do is have a quick look at defining digital university, digital literacy, look at some national initiatives and what some of the things we're doing in the DIT. The students what we have today, according to the 2015 digital trends in higher education, 81% of students are using mobile devices such as tablets and smartphones for study purposes. 66 saying it was moderately to extremely important for them to be able to use the devices for educational purposes. And 77% saying it had a positive effect on the grades. And they want to see the same uh, initiatives used in their study technology. Now, I always quote from The Economist, and The Economist had, a, had, had a, um, um, an editorial recently on the smartphone. Smartphones have become the fastest selling gadget in history. They've penetrated every aspect of daily life. The average American is buried in one for over two hours, asked what media they would most miss. British teenagers picked mobile phones over TVs, PCs and games. About 10% admit to having used the gadget during sex. So. <laughs> So I want actually to have a show of hands, <laughs> and the, sh the show of hands is the show of the show of hands is if you had a choice between losing your wallet or your mobile phone, which would you prefer? If you prefer to lose your, your mobile phone, put up your hand. If, if you prefer to use your lose, what did I say first? Oh. Put your, your mobile phone, put up your hand. Yeah, sorry, you know what I meant. What defines the digital university? VLEs, digital scholarship, institutional repositories, open access. What about in teaching, course design, assessment? What about the need for an institutional strategy? Can the term digital be used to identify any particular set of technologies or spe specify a particular college type? I would say that most of our institutions pay no more than lip service to the whole idea. It's an add-on. And I talked to a Fulbright, student, a Fulbright scholar from America who says exactly the same thing for the institutional support in their American college. Academics, even when confident with the technologies, have little support. I don't know if any of you know Bernie Goldblatt, who works in the Limerick Institute of Technology. He's quite a character, but what he says about the digital agenda is that it has to start by ensuring teachers play an active role in it and have the necessary institutional support. And digital literacy? Now, I'm not going to insult your intelligence or bullet point defining. We all know what digital literacy, we've got an idea to say. Suffice to say, we agree that the crucial role that the library has to play in it. This is just one image of many. I just quite liked it. It, it doesn't, but you can pick any number of these off the web. But I like it. It's, uh, it's what it does. Digital literacy, it's proactive, it's collaborative, it's social. Now, and I've say, heard it say that it's the best thing to happen to libraries because unlike Ordinary information literacy, the digital, is something that we can be part of and feed into and be embedded and work collaboratively with other people, um, stakeholders in our institutions. As I've said before, the problem, if you've got digital literacy, the problem for the staff is the digital and the problem for the student is the literacy. Now, various scepticisms of digital that I've got. Now, Mary 
you, Mary Delaney, you all know, or if you don't know, you all should know Mary. And she talked at a, co at a conference about digital vernacular. And that's her research that she's brought across about local literacy that people, especially young people, use in day-to-day -day life and business for pleasure socially. But just because they're using Instagram or Tinder or whatever, it doesn't mean they, c they can also use an online academic reference source or whatever. So that's what we have to look at. Andrew Keane is a commentator, writes easy dip in, dip out books like The Cult of the Amateur, The Internet is Not the Answer. You know the sort of thing. It's entertaining and it's littered with anecdotes. And his latest book, Digital Vertigo, is arguing that social and digital media is weakening, disorientating and dividing us rather than establishing the dawn of a new egalitarian and communicable age. Digital veneer, I'm going to take responsibility because I couldn't find, if you put it into the internet, you won't find it as a term. And it gets back to that idea of universities which are saying, yeah, we do this, but they're actually not as well. I threw David Graeber in there because he's one of my favourite commentators at present. He lectures in social anthropology in the London School of Economics, scathing about bureaucracy in the private sector and the takeover of academia by professional executives and how technological advance have, has, not, has not taken us to the promised land. The final thing is just a link to an article, technology will never fix. It's more to do with social inequality, social economic disparities, and it highlights the core and never changing importance of education and success of personal motivation, strong college leadership, good teachers, and involved parents. Now, you can paper your house with these initiatives that have been put out over the last couple of years. <laughs> Way back in 2012, the department were highlighting the need for higher education to explicitly address the generic skills required for effective engagement in society. In the same year, the expert group were playing up for the need for educational programmes to meet changing regional and national demands, with the emphasis on work-based experiences, enterprises and innovation. Then last year's digital, uh, digital capacity talked up the skills, competencies, attitudes, infrastructure and resources that enable us all to work, live and learn in a world that is increasingly digital. And that brings us right up to the most recent uh, digital roadmap, on page 27, I've got the report here, but, but on page 27, priorities for success, I just want to quote, a coordinated multi-level approach to foster digital literacy, skills and confidence among students at all levels of education needs to be developed. And in page 30, it goes on, it asks the questions of our institutions, has this strategy been developed? Are the development of digital skills explicit in your learning outcomes? And is there a robust evaluation protocol in place? And if the answers are, well, maybe, sort of, no, one of the actions would be proposed that you implement and do it through an institutional review and at program design and delivery levels. Now, I don't know how easy that's going to be to see. That's, it. that's the nirvana or holy grail that we're striving for in the DIT. We're working around the five E's, which are all in there, engagement and um, such like. We put digital literacy under expert but to my mind, it could just as easily be under inquiry-based, along with critical thinkers or creators of new knowledge. But there's connections across the park there, and you can sort of, as long, and that is sort of the attempt that we're doing to get it um, sort of embedded into our, um, into our institute. Oh, sugar. Um, all right, I'll, take, I'll just take one or two things out of this. As far as I'm aware, our institute, the DIT is the only institute that has a postgraduate diploma at third level for all new academic staff. And one of the lovely things we're doing this year, that the learning, teaching, technology, is a mobile learning uh, course which they're doing with, with staff in which they're learning about um, all sorts of mobile technologies during this term. And then they're going to put them into practice with a group of students um, starting in September to run until Christmas. All those things, if you are at all interested, you can link to later on. On the library side, we haven't been, we haven't been standing idly by. The, I'll, just, I'll just fix on one though, which is the middle one, the Graduate Attribute uh, Toolkit. It's ongoing, it's something that we're working with collaboratively with um, other people in the institution, other stakeholders, career service, um, IT. Um, the first thing to do with students is to get a digital audit. out. Audit. Find out who's doing what with what. Do the students get a chance to use a wide range of digital sources? Do they use mobile technologies as part of their learning? Can they digitally showcase and share their learnings? Engage digitally in self and peer review? And is it appropriate? No point having technology for the sake of technology. Um, 
fun. These are all technologies that, f two more slides. These are um, all technologies that students um, are using. And you have to ask the question, are these, you know, are they, are these applications, are they fun, are they fundamental? It gets back to, has technology lived up to the hype? Uh, Peter Thiel is the founder of um, PayPal. You probably all know what he's talking about there with his 140 characters. Uh, that's what we've got. It's like, it's like um, the film The Third Man in which they say uh, about Switzerland, 500 years of peace and democracy and what did they give us? The cuckoo clock. And Seth Blatter apparently now as well. <laughs> And to finish, um, I started with a quote from Einstein. I would have liked to have ended, one, ended from one by Isaac Newton on some sort of theory of motion, but I'll have to ch stop with this. And as for the question that started at the beginning, digital literacy in the university or the other way around, I still don't know. <laughs> Thank you.